Hey folks, we're out here at Kennetrek at their visitor center at their, is this your only facility? This is it. This is it? Yep. Bozeman, Montana. Bozeman, Montana headquarters. All right. Yep. Anyhow, I'm with Wyatt, the marketing manager here at, at Kennetrek. And in our last video, we talked about socks, the importance of sock selection and how they serve a very important purpose of foot care because foot care and boot care and socks are all one and the same. Yep. So now I'd like to walk through and just give the viewer why you have certain boots of certain styles, certain designs, and what their application is for. Yep. So Yeah. Yeah, but, we like to tell people that, you know, no matter where in the world they're going, we have a boot that is specifically designed for that purpose. Yeah. Um, whether it be Africa, Alaska on a sheep hunt or just right here in Montana on an elk hunt. Yeah. And I've got quite a few of your models here and I use them for different purposes, yep. but I would say my basic boot that I'm always going to is your mountain extreme. Not always, but most often. Yeah. I can find a lot of uses for a mountain extreme. Yep. So, so the mountain extreme series, um, it's our, it's our bread and butter. It's, you know, our most popular boot, um, inside of the line, there's two different options, a non-insulated and a 400. Um, and it seems like it's kind of interesting. There's almost like an elevation or a geographical line where people buy the non-insulated versus the 400. Really? Yeah. Certain elevations or later season hunting, Colorado, Montana, we sell more of the 400s. Further south, where guys are hunting New Mexico elk, Arizona elk, it's mainly non-insulated. Huh. Obviously because of temperature mainly. Right. I ended up with the mountain extremes because of the versatility, because of the yeah. support. And I am one of those lucky people who I can get by with a non-insulated version mm -hmm. later into the season. Yep. Part of that is, I guess, growing up in northern Minnesota, you get accustomed to taking care of your feet in the right. cold. Right. But also, by using the proper sock system, I can extend the use of a non-insulated version later into the season than maybe some people think they can. Yep. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of like you. I wear the non-insulated from early archery season all the way down until it's about... 15 to 20 degrees. Yeah. Um, I'm just have warm enough feet to where I can get away with that. Yeah. Some people, if it's 30 or 25 and they're sitting glassing on a knob and they're in non insulated boots, they might get a little chilly. Yeah. Uh, and so that's where the 400s come into play. Yeah. So the Mountain Extreme, most common, you said it's your bread and butter. It is. And yep. from there, I mean, is it got some basic platform? to it that, yep. hey, this is what we have and this is why we have it? Yeah, so it's special because we uh, we designed our own propri proprietary sole for this boot. It's called the K-Talon. Mm -hmm. um, really, the whole purpose behind that was to create a versatile sole that had good grip, good durability, and would perform well in multiple conditions from cold to hot weather to rock, shale, things you'd see on a sheep hunt or an elk hunt in the Bridgers. Right. Um, and so we feel like we've done a pretty good job of that. Um, yeah, And then you have. <laughs> <laughs> building from that, the Mountain Extreme has a uh, seven millimeter polyurethane midsole. Okay. Um, that's what creates the stiffness, the torsional rigidity. If you see, there's very little side to side movement in this right. boot. What that allows you to do is you can stand on a rock Yep. with an inch of your boot on it and hold yourself up as and, you're moving and, along. And you're not going to get this this You're not going to roll on your effect. ankles. Yep. You're not going to slip. Um, obviously, you're not going to stand there for a while, but if you're on right. the move and that rock is all you've got, you can step on it and it'll hold you. Yeah. In most of my mountain hunts, with, you take my pack, my binos, my rifle. I've got 30 pounds on my back and in, in addition to my body weight yep. at, at a minimum. Yep. And then if I'm lucky and I shoot some, right. then you add a lot more weight. And that's when, especially side hilling or uneven terrain, mm -hmm. that's when you really notice the value of that rigidity. Oh yeah, it's gonna really cut down on fatigue at the end of the day. Um, you're not gonna be nearly as sore because your, your joints and all your, your, you know, your knees and your ankles, everything's stable. Right. Um, and it all starts at the bottom, right. at your feet. One thing that people don't understand is that over time, feet don't stay the same forever. No, it's a bummer. Yeah, your yeah. arch flattens, your foot gets 
wider yep. and does it get longer? Yeah, a little bit. As your arch falls, your foot will get a little longer. So the guy who said, you, yeah, I've been wearing a size 10 and a half since high school. No. And no. he's now my age, 52. Right. He's probably got some changes in width. Oh, yeah. And length. Yep. And so that comes down to getting sized correctly. Um, we recommend wherever you're getting fit to use a, it's called a Brannock device. And this is what we build all of our boots off of. Um, so if you build it off that device, you know if you get fitted with a Brannock device, it's going to match the sizing. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And because I'm one of those crazy people who one foot is a 10 and a half and the other is an 11. Mm -hmm. You're not crazy. That's most of people. Really? Yeah. It's 80% of people that we fit. So these are mountain extremes. If we put these back and say, all right, this is kind of where everything starts from. Correct. What are the features of slightly different boots and, and why would somebody want a different yeah. boot? Yeah, so basically, like you mentioned, this is sort of the main uh, boot category. This, the Mountain Extreme, the Hard Scrabble Hiker, everything else is built off of this with slight tweaks to be better suited for certain scenarios. So for example, we have the Mountain Guide series, which uh, is a Mountain Extreme upper, essentially. Yeah. It's still, we still offer it in a 400 gram insulation and a non-insulated. Still waterproof, uh, fully waterproof with a Wintex membrane. The only thing we change up is the sole. Okay. So this has a Vibram sole. It's meant to be a little more durable. Um, guys who are in them every single day from you know, Alaska sheep guides, basically. Right. Um, really nasty terrain. They're a slight bit stiffer because of that one piece sole. So again, specialty boot, um, specialty uses, specialty hunts. Yeah. Well, I don't know if there's a group of people who put more abuse to a boot than sheep hunters. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the sheep don't live in very nice country. So, so from there, we move into the desert guide, which is essentially a non-waterproof membrane. Uh, when you say non-waterproof, so it's mostly just... Well, it's, it's leather. It doesn't right. have the, the membrane in there. Right. So it's still water resistant and will shed water if you treat it. Yeah. Um, but it's meant for breathability. It's, we designed this boot for the Mexico sheep hunter, the desert sheep right. hunter. Or um, fools like me who love to go to Arizona, and now I've got this addiction about archery hunting coos deer. Right, so again, specialty boot. Um, this isn't gonna be your, your only boot. Right. This is, you've got the mountain extremes, <clears throat> but you're going on a desert sheep hunt or you're going to Arizona on a coos deer hunt. Right. Now, if you live in Arizona and coos deer is all you hunt, this is great. Right. But if you're a Montana guy like me and uh, you don't hunt in that condition, so this is not an elk hunting boot. Right. Across all of the boots, we have, very sim we have all the same hardware, all the same lacing, insoles, um, all the same leather is used. So really, like I said, they're all built off of this platform just with specialty purposes. So we've been talking pretty technical about some of this stuff. This looks like it could have been my boot at one time. Yeah, maybe. They, they sawed it right in <laughs> half here. This boot is, it definitely had some wear and tear on it. Yep, yeah, that's uh, a little bit of use. Um, <laughs> so when you're talking about a bunch of these, let, let's just kind of talk about from the bottom up. Yep. Tell me how this boot is constructed and what purpose each of these things serve because it wasn't just by happenstance that you guys said, oh, well, yeah, let's just do that. Yeah, let's throw uh, some plastic in there and yeah. So, no. so uh, on the very bottom here, we have the, the K Talon sole. Yeah. Um, that is laminated to an EVA foam padding. So you can see there, the I don't know if the camera can show that. There's this line right here yep. where the K Talon sole mates up with that padding. Correct. Okay. Yep. And that is solely for shock absorption. Okay. From there, we move up to the polyurethane midsole. Which is this green piece here? Correct. Okay. And so that's a full length, seven millimeter. That's what provides the front to back stability. So you can't flex this boot toe to heel. There's right. very little toe to heel flex in it. Right. As you break them in, there'll be a little bit more in the ball area. Right. But so there's the this, beginning. There's a taper in that. Correct. 
and it gets to be less out here. Is that to allow more flexibility out at the toe? Correct. Yep. But yet all the support yep. that you need along the way. Yep, and then it's important that it runs full length and fully side to side, because that's what creates that platform. When you talk about the membrane, how is that put together and what's the purpose of the membrane? Yeah, so the membrane is, is there to keep water out basically. Okay. I mean, leather on its own is water resistant. But, but not waterproof. Not waterproof. And then also, as we stitch it and put holes in the, the leather, that's obviously going to leak if there's no membrane there. Right. Um, so the Wintex membrane is in between the, the boot cambrel and the foam padding. Okay. Uh, it's just a little liner in there. But it allows moisture to go one direction and doesn't allow it to come the Correct. other direction. Yep. Okay. Yep. So membrane, foam for padding, mm -hmm. and then the outer leather. Outer leather, yeah. That's a lot that goes into a boot. Yeah, yep. And then the hardware, yep. if you want it. I would call this hardware. It is hardware. Yeah. Because this, uh, it, this, is, uh, this gets a lot of stress put on mm -hmm. it. Yep, and we use the uh, the most durable hardware we can find. Um, it's actually, believe it or not, the hardware is one of the more expensive, from a cost standpoint, one of the more expensive components of the whole boot. Really? Yeah. So the boot that kind of cuts corners and just makes a, a wider flap here with just the little grommet holes right. in it. Right, right. That's much cheaper. Much cheaper, much cheaper. But you'll find out about that when you least need it. 10 miles in, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a good place. Hmm. Cool. Yep. So that's what goes in. That, that's what the in. That, when you lift the hood. Yep. That's what inside. Exactly. The Kenetrek boot. Yep. For every application you have, there's a reason why Kenetrek has done what they've done mm -hmm. to build the boot for that application. Yep. Is that a good way to say that? Absolutely. All right. Yeah, that's the shortened condensed version. <laughs> yeah, wherever you're going, we got a boot for it. Yeah. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Now we're going to get in the next video. We're going to get into how to care for your boots.